What's up guys? We are back with another Mythic Legions review, taking a look today at not something from the latest Soul Spiller wave, but rather something from the newest wave that is yet to be released. So if you are not aware, the Horsemen occasionally will early release a few figures at certain toy conventions, one of them being New Jersey Toy Con, since that's kind of, you know, in their neck of the woods. And I was able to get a friend to snag me the two figures that they released there. And we, of course, have got to take a look at the Goblin that came out for these two Siege at Bjorngar figures. So we're taking a look today at Thwick. I couldn't not go with the Goblin just because I absolutely love the advent of Decay Goblin, so this has been on my mind for a while. We've of course got him here in our standard Mythic Legions packaging. You can see him there in the window, collector-friendly stuff. You've got a bio for him on the side, and then the back of the package has the artwork we've been seeing throughout the line since Advent of Decay started up, as well as a write-up for the storyline. So let's do it. Let's pull him out and take a look. And here he is out of the package, our newest Goblin, Thwick. And just like with the other Goblins that we got in Advent of Decay, I'm really happy with this one right at the get-go. Uh, it's a lot of fun. These are great figures. So it's basically, you know what you're getting into if you're already familiar with the goblins. There's really not a lot of new ground here. We do have a new head sculpt here, and then we've got a pretty solid array of accessories, but a lot of this figure is very familiar, which is not necessarily a bad thing. It's just worth noting. So let's jump in, see what this guy can do, see how he moves around. If you're familiar with the Goblin Legion Builder or Nubnik, you're going to be very familiar here because those figures are almost identical to this. Little changes here and there, but for the most part, all three of them uh, are basically the same when you add this guy into the mix. So we've got a head that can look up, down, bobble side to side, and then rotates. Arms go all the way out. They rotate, of course. If you want to put some pauldrons on this guy, that is going to change things a little bit, but we'll talk about that when we get there. You've got your rotating single-jointed elbow, and this guy has these massive... Uh, elbow pads which do kind of get in the way when you want to start moving things around because it's going to start to hit the gauntlets are going to hit this pad right away so you're going to have to take that into consideration otherwise things could rotate all the way around so the forearm rotates the wrist rotates and then you've got a hinge there as well you do have an upper diaphragm swivel so he can move side to side bobble he goes back a little bit he goes forward a little bit and then you've got a waist twist down here as well with a ball peg so you've got twist a little more side to side momentum and then backwards and forwards a little bit more when you engage both of those joints. Legs go out, they kick forward. You do have to watch out for this waist piece, a waist piece here, the little loin cloth, and then you've got a cut. You've got kick back on there as well. You've got your single rotating knee joint, and then as usual down at the ankles, you've got rotation, you've got rocker, and then you've got hinges. So he moves, you know, exactly like I would have expected him to. He is very, very, very familiar to me in terms of figures I've already played around with. The only real difference is, of course, the head sculpt, but that doesn't impede articulation here. And then you do have to watch out for these elbow pads. They're just incredibly massive in comparison to the rest of the body. So like this thing right here is just kind of a hindrance, but you can work around it if you're paying enough attention. Now, as far as the overall look and feel, like I've said a couple times, this guy is very familiar to me when it comes to his overall parts so the chest the arms the legs the 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 crotch most of this figure is stuff we've already seen in almost this exact configuration before Normally that might kind of bother me, but this particular instance doesn't really because he fits in with the other goblins. So they all kind of have that same aesthetic when it comes to Nubnik and the Goblin Legion builders. You can kind of think that he is among, you know, the main ranks of the Goblin army. So it kind of works that way. What's really different are his color schemes. So he's got the uh, silver arms. He's got some silver or more, more gunmetally color on his thighs and then a little bit on the chest. And the chest is really pitted and scratched and worn looks really nice. It's all very dirtied up, and I, I love that effect. The horsemen do that really well. But you've also got some gold on the inside of the chainmail underneath the silver parts on the arms, which is a nice touch. It brings out another little bit of color, and it kind of catches the light nicely. He does have a little bit of blue on the furry loincloth at the waist piece that he has down there. And then for the most part, the figure is kind of a standard smaller knight type of body. So it's that, that kind of dark knight aesthetic that we see with, again, a lot of the goblins. And then more of the same on the backside. You can just see more of that gold peeking through down here, but then you've got those different color schemes. So you've got the silver, 
the silver, kind of the worn black metal, and then you've got more of the straight black down here on the shin pads at the bottom. So he is, again, very familiar, while at the same time having a nice, different enough color scheme to make him stand out amongst those other figures. But then again, the main thing that keeps this guy from looking like the rest of the Goblin ranks is this wild new head and helmet sculpt. And this is the aspect of this figure that made me really want to have this. This new head sculpt was worth the price of admission. He does come with some pretty good accessories that uh, really round out this character, but the head sculpt is where it's at. And I think they just did a fantastic job with this one. So you can see we've got him have like this really toothy smile. He's got those kind of underbite fangs sticking out. We've got those nice kind of evil, malicious yellow eyes peeking out there. And just the general sculpt and paint are, of course, on point as you always expect but of course we do have an entirely different helmet sculpt is here as well for this guy and he's got this wild horn display that he's got here and these guys do pop out so you can you know move those in and out move them around and they do rotate so if you want to kind of have them down like this you can do that whatever you want to do but they're nicely sculpted the paint on them is really good they've got kind of a reddish hue going on there with a decent bit of wash in there as well to bring out all that sculpt not to mention the fact that the helmet really matches the chest piece on this guy so it looks really really nasty and like covered in dirt and mud and soot so it very much looks battle worn but it's just the the kind of evil kind of malicious and uh, nefarious grin on this figure's face that really drives home just how cool this head sculpt is now, as far as accessories goes, this guy comes with a pretty solid spread. It's basically what you would expect to see in any normal type of figure from the line. So to begin with, you've got the back adapters, we've got the strap, all that kind of good stuff. We do have some pauldrons that match his armor, so match the, the breastplate and match the helmet. So they're just done up in a kind of distressed black-silver combo. And then he has a bunch of accessories that, you know, go along with his character theme. And he's meant to be an archer, so he does come with a crossbow here and this guy is done up in a really 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 dark brown and black color scheme and then of course it's got the actual string on it we have got a quiver of arrows and it's got some blue on it to match the blue on his on his uh, waist piece there and then he's also got the singular arrow which we see i think what every single time we get a bow and arrow or a crossbow so you've got all of that and then we have got this uh, kind of crescent blade here which is done up in a silver but almost uh, kind of washed silver color and then you've got a dirty red handle here we've seen this a few times and this is one of my favorite bladed weapons in the line and then we've got my favorite shield in the line which if i can remember we got this in the Dark Forces weapon pack, but that one didn't come with a handle, and this one does. So this guy can mount into the figure's back with this peg, or you've also got a handle that can go on either side here so he can actually hold it, which I think was the downside to the original shield. I think it was either just a missed opportunity or an error at the factory level. But we've got this one here. It's done up in brown to match uh, kind of the color on some of the, uh, the wooden aspects of the crossbow. And then you've got some metallic silver for all of the spikes that stick out of it. So I just really like this design. It's very, you know, turtle shell-esque. And it just looks really, really cool. And it's very fantasy inspired. So this thing's like likely always going to be in his hands in my collection, but he does come with a solid array of accessories to change him up however you want. So overall, this is another winning figure. The only the only difference this time around is that I've got this thing a lot earlier than I probably should have gotten it, but I'm incredibly happy to have this figure. I think it's a really cool addition to the line, a really cool addition to the Goblin subline that they're going for here, and I, I would really like to see more, but I'll take whatever we can get at this point. This guy's a definite great addition to just about any Legion collector's shelf, I would say. He's got a great new head sculpt a nice selection of parts that they've put together in this particular configuration. And he comes with a good array of accessories, not to mention the fact that we get my favorite shield again, which is a definite plus for me because I only had the one so far. So I would recommend anyone to, to grab this one when you get the chance. You will not be disappointed, especially if you're a Goblin fan. This is definitely one to get a hold of. So that's going to do it for this look at the Mythic Legion's Siege at Bjorngar Thwick figure. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And until next time.